We are interrupting the show for a special report. Because now it is time for Bag Lab. All right. So the other day I was browsing through Facebook as one tends to do sometimes. And I came across an ad. I do generally enjoy seeing Facebook ads because a lot of times they're things I need and um, I often buy things from Facebook ads. <laughs> I don't know if I should admit that or not, but um, I came across this ad. Danny's going to put a picture on the screen of a orange backpack. So I saw this ad and I was like, it looks at least the shape and the way that there's a front zippered pocket. It looks similar to the widget messenger bag. Uh, Danny's going to put a picture on the screen of the widget. I designed this bag a few years ago. All right, so there's the widget, as you can see, similar shape. Um, Danny's going to put the orange bags photo up on the screen one more time. So I wanted to do sort of a demonstration for how to add, how to make a bag into a sling backpack. And a sling backpack is just a backpack with a single strap like, like that orange bag has. Um, so Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera really quick. So here's the finished portion of tonight's demonstration. So here's the, this is the back of the backpack and this is that really fun portion that you would see from the front so it'll be facing forward um, as you have it on your back but this was really easy to add I feel like it's a little bit um, more I don't want to say upscale looking but something a little bit nicer than just a plain strap I like this little accent piece very much and the reason for the two d-rings on the bottom is so you can switch sides with a swivel clip if you'd like to have it depending on which shoulder you'd like to have it on that's the reason for the two different d-rings and um, this was fast and easy to put together I've actually put together a PDF document which you can download it's free just containing this single pattern piece but we filmed um, a video yesterday showing how I put all this together so Danny's gonna play the video for you right now if you have any questions during the video Feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll come back after the video and I'll answer either questions about this tutorial or if you haven't had any other questions throughout the show, I'll be answering some questions live after the demonstration. So enjoy. Before we begin, you'll need to open and print the PDF pattern file using Adobe Reader. It's a free program that you can download to your computer or device if you don't already have it. So this is just a single page with just one pattern piece on it. And you'll notice there's a one inch square and a four centimeter square. You'll want to take your ruler and measure either of those squares to make sure they measure either exactly one inch or exactly four centimeters. Uh, they shouldn't measure slightly smaller or slightly larger. It needs to be exact. So you'll take your scissors and cut to the outside of the thick black line. And if you'll notice on this page, I've also got some other notations for which hardware will be needed for making the sling strap for a backpack and I've also got some other pieces noted that will need to be cut out from your exterior fabric and your shape flex interfacing so um, for example for the strap piece you'll be cutting out two strips a 40 inch by 6 inch strip and another that's 20 inches by 6 6 inches we'll be sewing those right sides together and let me show you this example um, in order to make a longer strap so I'm going to take these again right sides together and I'm since my fabric is dark I'm going to use chalk and I'm just going to make a notation where this piece underneath ends and I'm going to draw a diagonal line from this corner to the opposite corner. Okay so we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch directly on top of the line using our regular stitch length and be sure to back stitch at start and stop. Once you've sewn those two pieces together, together, you'll press the seam open and you will have a single piece of your strap fabric and you will use that piece of fabric to cut your shape flex interfacing. So you'll be cutting um, the shape flex interfacing one inch shorter than the entire length of the strap and you'll be centering that um, so there will be a little bit extra length of the fabric showing on either side past the interfacing and you'll go ahead and fuse the shape flex interfacing according to manufacturer instructions. 
So what I usually like to do is I like to have the fabric right side face down and then place the shape flex directly on top. The bumpy side of the shape flex is going, against, going to go against the wrong side of the fabric. And I have my iron set at the cotton setting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move it over all areas of the fabric for a few seconds until I've fused the entire length of the strap. And I usually like to do a little check to make sure the interfacing has properly adhered. And I like to take my fingernail and try to peel back a corner of the interfacing away from the fabric. If it easily peels away, you'll just need to iron a little bit longer. And if it's properly adhered, you can go ahead and attach the remaining shape flex interfacing to the other pieces um, as noted in this section over here on your PDF pattern file. You'll also need to attach the interfacing as called for in whatever pattern that you're working on. So for this particular example, I'm using the widget messenger bag and I have my piece of fabric attached to the interfacing as called for in the pattern. And we'll be focusing on the piece that will be the back of the bag or the back of the backpack. So this is one of my exterior main panels from the widget pattern. And again, this is the piece that will be the back of the backpack or the piece that will rest on the person's back when they're holding the bag. Okay, now we're going to do some pressing on most of our pieces. So I'll show you how to do that starting with the strap. So I'm going to flip the strap so that it is wrong side facing up. And I'm going to take my ruler and draw a line that's half inch in from the short side edge. And you'll do the same thing for the opposite side as well, the other short end. And I'm going to press the fabric toward the wrong side at that half inch line that I drew. Now I'm going to fold the fabric wrong sides together in half so that both of the long edges meet. And you'll continue pressing the entire length of the strap piece. I'm gonna open the fabric outward and I'm going to bring the lower edge up toward the center crease and press. I'm also going to bring that top edge down toward the center crease and press again. And again, you'll be pressing the entire length of the strap. Refold the fabrics and press one more time. Okay, so for the strap piece, you'll be taking this over to the sewing machine and top stitching both of the long edges an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. And for top stitching, I generally like to slightly increase my stitch length. So for this top stitching, I'll be increasing to three millimeters on my machine. So there's two other pieces, two other types of pieces um, that will also be pressing and top stitching. So the first is the lower strap extender. These are four inch by four inch squares and you should have two of them. They will both be pressed in the same manner. So first I'm going to flip to the wrong side and bring one, the bottom edge up toward the top and press. And this will be pressed almost the same like what we did with the strap. I'll bring the lower edge up toward the center crease and press again. And then I'll also bring the top edge to the center crease and press as well as refolding the fabrics and pressing one more time. Okay, so you'll notice for this piece, you'll have a raw edge on either side. And same thing as with the strap, we'll be top stitching an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric on top and bottom. And again, there's, there's two of these lower strap extender pieces that are four inches by four inches. And there's one more type of piece and that's the upper strap extender. This one's three inches by six inches. I'm gonna flip so that the wrong side is face up. And for this piece, I'm gonna bring both of the short ends so that they meet and press. I'm going to bring the lower edge up toward the center crease. Press again. Same thing for the top edge, bring it toward the center crease. 
and then refold the fabric and press one more time. Okay, so for this piece also, we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric on top and bottom. And though we'll be doing the same top stitching for all of the types of pieces that I just showed, I'm gonna take this one over to the sewing machine and show you how I top stitch so that you can see what it looks like. Okay, and again, I'm going to be doing this top stitching using a slightly lengthened stitch length and in my machine, that'll be three millimeters. And you'll do the same thing for the two, or two lower strap extender pieces as well as top stitching your strap. Now take your lower strap extender out. This should be where you have the two pieces and the finished size should be one inch wide. We're actually gonna trim one inch off of this piece. And the reason that I'm having us trim is so that I could have you start with a four inch by four inch square where both sides are the same. Just it's just easier for pressing purposes. Okay, so you'll do the same thing for both pieces. And then you'll take out your one inch D-ring and we're actually going to slide the fabric onto the D-ring and fold it in half so that both of the raw edges are aligned. You do the same thing for both pieces and they will look like this. So now you'll pull out the piece that will be part of whatever pattern you're working on. This will be the back of the bag and I'm going to take my ruler and draw a line that's one inch up from the bottom edge and I'm just going to transfer it on both the left side and the right side no need to draw it straight across and I'm going to place each piece of fabric with the D rings so that the raw edges of the fabric are aligned with the raw side edges and the bottom edge will be at that one inch line that we just drew Okay, same thing on the other side. And we're going to stitch this in place either side an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. And you'll do the same thing to attach the second portion with the D-ring. Now go ahead and cut out the two pieces that we cut from the pattern piece that was on the PDF. And we're going to place them right sides together. I'm going to pin the side and the top edges. We're going to sew the sides and the top using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to be sewing this using my regular stitch length and on my machine that's two and a half millimeters. Now I'm going to notch the curved edges, which means cutting a small V where the curves are, and the little Vs will be approximately a half inch away from each other. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this right side out and press. You can use either your fingers or a turning tool to gently push out the corners. And before pressing, I'm actually going to put a couple wonder clips to hold the raw edges of, of the fabric in place. I'm going to line the raw edges first and then put a couple of wonder clips in place. What this does is it helps the fabric spread evenly apart rather than kind of um, being a little bit offset when you go to press. Okay, we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch the finished edge, and actually we'll be sewing all the way around the entire outer edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and I'm going to increase my stitch length to three millimeters for this top stitching. Now 
now go ahead and pull out your upper strap extender and your metal rectangle and I'm going to go ahead and place the fabric through the rectangle and fold it in half so that both of the raw edges are aligned. So I'm going to place this piece of fabric so that it's centered along this bottom raw edge of um, the piece that we cut from the principal pattern piece. So I'm going to go ahead and place it and then I'm going to take my ruler and measure from either side. It should be about an inch and a quarter in. So I'm going to reposition my wonder clips in place. So we're going to be sewing first this left hand side edge a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Come as close to the purse hardware as you can um, comfortably with your presser foot. Sew a horizontal line and then come back um, down the other side. Now go ahead and pull out the piece that you previously attached, um, the fabric attached to the D-rings. And we're going to attach this piece with the metal rectangle. So the hardware should be face up and we're going to align the raw edge of this piece that we printed out with the top edge of your bag piece. Um, again, this will be the, the back of your bag or your backpack. Okay, so besides having the raw edges aligned, I'm also going to make sure that it's centered. So again, whatever piece that you're using for whatever pattern that you're making, just go ahead and make sure it's centered along the top edge. Okay, so pin this in place and we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew this top pinned edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. One thing I wanted to mention, if your machine is having trouble dealing with this thickness up here, you can always omit this piece and just have this little um, square of fabric attached to the metal rectangle, have that by itself, because keep in mind, you'll still need to attach this uh, to the rest of the bag as you start assembling whatever pattern that you're working on. So now we're gonna start attaching the strap. So go ahead and take your strap piece out and we're going to attach it to the swivel clip. And by the way, my hardware is not matching today. This is just the particular pieces that I happen to have on hand, um, but that's okay. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw a line that's one inch in from one of the short edges. I'm going to take this end and slide it onto the swivel clip. And I'm going to fold it back at that one inch line. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric and also a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Now I'm going to draw a line with my ruler on the opposite end as the swivel clip that's two inches in from the short end. Okay, now go ahead and pull out this piece that we've been working on so far and the last bit of hardware, which is the metal slider. So I'll consider this the right side of the fabric, the side opposite where the fabric is fold over, folded over. So I'm going to slide the swivel clip on the right side of the fabric so that it looks like this. Then I'm going to slide this short end through the metal rectangle. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that um, slider down a bit. 
and I'm going to push the fabric on either side up a little bit so that I have access to this middle bar over here. So I'm going to push this short end of the fabric on one side of the bar and then bring it down through the opposite side so that it looks like this. So this is the piece that I, that I threaded through. So I'm going to pull it through until I reach that two inch marking that I made. I'm going to position that two inch marking where that middle bar is and then I'm going to fold the fabric back onto itself. So what I mean by that is this is the piece over here that I threaded through and we're going to fold it down just like that. Okay, so feel free to move the fabric out of the way. And we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew an eighth of an inch away and also a quarter of an inch away and we're not sewing through this piece at all, just through these two layers right here. Okay, so this portion is actually finished. You can go ahead and start assembling the bag or backpack according to whatever pattern that you're working on. So this piece over here, when the back bag or backpack is finished, this will be sort of flipped up so that this will be visible from the front or the right side of the bag or the backpack. And the reason that we have the two D-rings over here is so you can clip this swivel clip onto either end depending on which shoulder you would like to carry the bag on. Um, I guess one more note that I have is if you'd like to secure these D-rings a little bit better, you can top stitch about a, a half an inch away from the hardware, um, making sure to back stitch. Same thing for this piece. So you won't be sewing it through the actual body of the bag, just this piece over here. And it just, what this does is it just helps prevent the D-rings from kind of sliding up and down. Um, that part's completely optional, but just in case you'd like to do it, um, just know that that is an option. And this is just a really easy way to sort of give an upscale look to um, a bag that might not already be a backpack, but perhaps you'd like to turn it into a sling backpack. Or if you have a backpack that already comes with two straps that you would like to kind of play around with and turn it into a single strap backpack, this is a nice way to do that as well. So again, um, if you'd like to check out the PDF document, you can um, save download and print that out and um, turn any bag or backpack into a single strap sling. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration on how to make any just about any bag into a sling backpack. I did notice while I was sitting here looking at my little sewn sample, I have a little diagonal stitch. Danny, would you mind switching to the overhead camera like a, a close zoom, if you will? Thank yeah, you. Close. Thank you. So this area over here, see how there's like a little diagonal stitch. I actually have, uh, I guess I did not follow my own instructions, but I do have a video on my YouTube channel showing how to avoid that. So if you go to the So Sweetness YouTube channel and type in skipped stitch in the search box, that video will show up. It's just something super simple that you can do to avoid that when you're sewing sort of a, a pivot corner like that. So um, check that out if you're interested after the show. Um, and I think Danny said he, there were a few questions about uh, this uh, tutorial, so I'm going to answer those questions first before we get over to uh, the rest of the questions for tonight. Let's see, Betty says, how do you get the original widget backpack pattern? Uh, good question, Betty. Marie, I actually have a link to the widget messenger bag pattern in the description. It's not a free pattern. It's uh, for purchase, either the PDF or the PDF with the video. And I've linked to that um, in the description in case you're interested in that. Oh, thanks, Shinova. Shinova also has that uh, link on the screen as well. Um, Life is so boring without your live shows, but I managed to survive. Thank you so much. That is so sweet of you to say. Maribel says, would this pattern fit a 15-inch laptop? Let me grab my ruler. I'm going to guess no. So this piece in front of me, granted, I'm not including the seam allowance, is 11 and a quarter high by... 
eight and three quarters wide. Again, that's just the size of this piece. So you would need to increase the pattern or perhaps choose a different pattern. Um, if you wanted to increase the size of the widget pattern, I do have a free video discussing how to increase or decrease the pattern. So you can find that on my YouTube channel or on my website in case you're interested in that as well. And Kim says, I wonder if you can do this with the Marlin backpack. I do not have a Marlin up here on my set, but um, I don't see why you couldn't. Seems like it would be perfectly reasonable to me. Um, Kathy says, filling up my shopping cart with So Sweetness products. Thank you very much, Kathy. Kelly says, question, do rivets hold better than sewing the hardware on or is sewing them bettered? It depends. If you if your fabric thickness and your sewing machine will allow you to do both, sew and then attach the rivets, I would suggest doing both. Sometimes you might be working with a fabric that's super thick. For instance, um, this adjustable strap that I was talking about where I, I folded it back and then sewed it through both layers of the strap. If it's super thick and you just can't get it stitched through with your sewing machine, having rivets, maybe two rivets over here, maybe folding back the, the fabric a little bit farther so you have room for the rivets, but um, rivets or Chicago screws are a good alternative if something like this, you just can't manage to get it under your machine to stitch it. Uh, were there any more? Uh, oh, thank you very much, Tam. Tam says, fabulous demo. Thank you. I really appreciate that. 